everybody. It is Crystal Ann Compton. How are you doing today? I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. In this video, I actually want to share a recent conversation that I had with my really good friend, Brian Fisher, over on our podcast called Spirit Pop. Now, if you aren't subscribed, I don't, I don't, ow, oh, that hurts my feelings. If you're not subscribed, it hurts my feelings. Spirit Pop is our podcast where we talk about celebrity news, current trending topics, and we try to bring that spiritual perspective in so we can keep it 100% spiritual real. And we also just, we talk a lot about metaphysical things and spiritual things. And so in today's video, what I'm going to do is share with you our recent After Pop episode, wherein we discuss gratitude and prayer. I know what you're thinking. That's boring. Well, what I want to tell you is that it's act these two things are actually two of the most powerful things that you can occupy, embody, and harness in order to manifest what you truly want for yourself. And aren't you tired? Aren't you tired <laughs> of some of the things coming your way perpetually? Don't you want to create new outcomes and new experiences and new conditions? I bet you do. And if you do, you got to know how to pray and why you should pray. And you also need to know the power of gratitude. And so Brian and I discuss this and more in today's After Pop. Now, I do want to remind you that tonight we have Holy Agreements. Our Holy Agreements meeting for April is tonight at 6 p.m. Central. And if you haven't yet signed up to my mailing list so that you can receive the deets, then you should do so by going to crystallandcompton.com slash agreements. That's crystallandcompton.com slash agreements. Get on the mailing list. Also join my Life Magnetics Facebook group because the invite code and all of the details is always available in my Life Magnetics group. So either one of those, if you want to attend tonight, holy agreements, y'all it's happening tonight. And also I think the early registration discount for the channeling intensive is I think it expires next week and the channeling intensive, which is a six week live online program uniquely designed to connect you to your divine emissaries and to begin to channel them that begins May 9th and that is coming up. And if you want to join me and Trisha Carr and a lot of wonderful conscious students already assembled in the community, then I encourage you to check out the link in the description or the link below, look at the details and join us. And now let's get into today's video. Well, Brian, we have come to that part of the pop, which is after the spirit and is now all about us, just us. Well, and that which we would like to speak about that has nothing to do with Will Smith slapping somebody, Chris Rock on the stage or Joe Exotic marrying his prison mate. <laughs> We've already covered that, but... Is there anything else that you would like to talk about today? I figure let's talk about, you know, we, we talk about spiritual practice and, and connecting to our higher selves and our helpers on the other side and channeling and all that. But I think an important part of that and leading a higher vibration life is gratitude and like prayer. Mm -hmm. And so I've had um, spirit poppers ask, well, you know, what exactly is gratitude? And And I think because we have a, you know, podcast that deals with spiritual things, I think that they must think it's something different or there's some grand practice of it that, that's eluded them for years. So they, they would like a little explanation about gratitude and then, and then prayer, because, you know, many people I know ha are of different faiths and denominations mm -hmm. and beliefs. And so, but what is prayer? Although it's pretty much the same thing for everyone. But, you know, I, I thought it would be interesting to have a little chat about that and, you know, open a few eyes. Well, I love talking about prayer because I think people get this wrong impression that it has to be like genuflecting and I've got to have a rosary and I've got to, I've got to go to the front of the, of the room with the priest and I've got to get the Eucharist. I've got to pray or I have to pray in a specific way. The Eucharist, with, that sounds like a deadly disease. It, I've got to get the Eucharist. I don't want it. I don't know. The actual body of Christ, if you're a Catholic, you know. Oh, the I waiver. Know. The it's... waiver. <laughs> the waiver. I the signed waiver. a waiver. I signed the a waiver wa to get out of hell. 
It's my waiver to get out of hell. Um, uh, so, but people have these ideas about prayer that it is kind of this, you know, ornate sort of grandiose thing that you have to do in a certain way when that cannot be further from the truth. I don't think. Here's the thing. Here, let me break it down real break it simple. Down, break it down. Break light. it down now. Okay. Meditation is hanging out with spirit. Getting yourself into a state, an altered state of consciousness where you can just be present and hang out with spirit. Prayer is having a conversation with spirit. So instead of just being present in the energy of source, we're actually communicating and talking back and forth. And so part of communication, of course, is to speak, right, or to express. But another very important part is to actually listen and understand before speaking again. And anytime we speak to spirit, spirit always speaks back to us. It's a conversation and we communicate in relationships with other people in order to be in a deeper communion with them. And I talk with you so I can know you more and I know what makes you tick. And I can also know how to serve you, you know, and we can be friendly in this way and we can love one another in this way. That's what communication is. And that's all that prayer is. And before I'm not going to go off and crazy, but let me just say, <laughs> it is very important not to pray like a beggar. Because God did not make you, create you, or fashion you to be a beggar. When you pray, you are having a communication, a conversation with a being that is also divine. You're divine and God is divine. And you come from that divine energy. And so we never beg for something that we want. What we do is we create it. We create it spontaneously as we're having the conversation with source. Because when you beg, like save a wretch like me, you are energetically assigning yourself a specific vibration that continues to make you a wretch in your day-to-day -day life. And if you're begging because you lack, and if your words express your lack, then you are simply creating more lack. So in your prayer time, make, a, make it a point not to do that and instead focus on I am statements. I am that I am. Those are the statements that define who you are and who you are creating yourself to be. So in prayer, like come into prayer in an empowered way, because that's how you manifest what you truly want. So that's my take on prayer. Let's hear your take on prayer. It's pretty much the same thing. I, I just, you know, and it's to me, it's separate from meditation, because like you say, it is a conversation. Meditation is the hangout. But I do take time either before or after. Well, actually, kind of throughout the day, I, I usually stop and have a moment. Like when something wonderful happens, I always take a moment and I, I say thank you. And, you know, I'm appreciative and, and all of that. But I mean, that that is what gratitude is, right? You should always be in a gratitude vibration because that then attracts more abundance to your life. Be grateful for it, what you have, even the simple things like just waking up today, having good health, having food, a house, you know, place to live, all the things that you have, because they're not, they're not guaranteed. So if you have them, you should be grateful. And I say, don't be envious. Don't want to be the millionaire. I mean, we all want more money. Of course we do. We want to be able to do things and it costs money. But if you're always begging, as you say, then you will never sort of manifest. But I find if you are truly happy and, and in gratitude for what you do have, then it just elevates your vibration for things to come. So I think, you know, what, when I do have the, the prayer moment, it's, it's really, it, it incorporates a lot of gratitude. It usually starts out with, you know, thank you. If it's at night, you know, thank you for this wonderful day, all the wonderful things that happened in the day. And then I, I do affirmations in that where I am affirming things that I, I say them just like you state, I am, you know, because if I want to be or or I need to be, well, then you're begging again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you, if you want to be wealthy, I am wealthy. Envision the, the amount of money that you want. Envision it already in your bank account. Envision you spending it and, and saving and investing and, and donating, you know, to charity, that sort of thing, because money should always be in a state of movement. It shouldn't just be stagnant. At least I feel that. And that's why you, you know, it should just keep going, but envision it, say it as if you already have it is you are that. There is a scripture that talks about entering into his courts with praise and thanksgiving. 
And what that tips us off to is that the the energetic disposition of praise and thanksgiving, which is gratitude and praise is joy, right? Just joy and gratitude. It literally opens the door into his chamber or into that co-creative space where we begin to manifest. And so gratitude is one of the highest vibrational energies that we can embody and express that manifests more circumstances, conditions, and things that match the frequency of it. So spending time saying thank you and noticing in the first place that you feel happy. Like so many people don't even notice, oh, I feel peaceful in this moment, or I feel safe in this moment. What happens is when you notice it and then say thank you in a way that you are embodying, like that you feel, now you're attracting more of these moments into your life. And I love what Reverend Ike did, which is he said, thank you, God in me. Thank you, God in me, because I just got that concept. Or thank you, God in me, because I just manifested Well, he had Rolls Royces and everything, you know. But thank you, God in me, because what that's actually acknowledging is the divine co-creative aspect inside of us, which Jesus mentioned when he said, you are all gods. Jesus was actually quote, quoting from the Old Testament, but he's underlining the fact that we are all gods, little g, but nonetheless, we have the same creative powers. And anything you're experiencing in your life, it's because you're creating it from the inner world, as above, so below, as without, so within. So that's why it's important to say something like, thank you, or thank you, God, and me. I acknowledge I am a part, I'm at the center of this process of creation and manifestation. Thank you for this good thing that I manifested with spirit and through myself. Now, it doesn't take the glory away from God to say that because we were created in God's image. And I would say to you what Jesus said, which is, I'm a, I'm a God. I am. I am a God. You're a God. We have the creative powers of a God. So we don't take away from any other deity by acknowledging that we're creating this ourselves and that we're thankful, yes, and grateful so that I can create more prayer, gratitude. So do you do something like um, have a or work with a gratitude journal? Yes, I do. I have a gratitude journal. And I basically, I start out my day, get up a few minutes early, and I just write a few things in there that I'm grateful for. And I also prophetic write in the sense that I'm writing, you know, thank you for my breath. Thank you for this day that I have just woken up to. Thank you for this great day that I'm about to embark upon. Thank you for the interactions I have with the people that I meet all day long. You know, it's, it's, so I, I'm, I'm making, I am creating mm -hmm. the day that I want. Ooh, I love and that. And so, and then at the end of the day, it's always, thank you for that opportunity to have whatever happened throughout the day and, and those interactions. And I even sometimes am specific, you know, somebody was having a bad day. We had a chat. It ended up being a great day for them. Thank you for that moment that I was able to share and commune with another person and help elevate their day. And it's just, it's just simple being grateful mm -hmm. for every little thing that happened throughout the day, because those are little miracles and they're right. little blessings that you get for yourself and that you get to give to others. And it really allows you to kind of be here now and to be present and to notice that God really is moving in all moments. If we don't take the time to take our own daily inventory and look at all the good things that happened, I think a lot of us feel that they're not happening. We don't remember them. Yeah. We don't, we, we're, they just, we just feel like life is a drag. Everything's toxic because we're not taking the time to notice and document the good things that are happening. So with a gratitude journal, just writing down five things, three to five things at the end of your day, or I love what you're talking about at the beginning of the day, like calling it into being. Yes, I love that. Just taking the time to do that helps you to really connect with your presence and helps you to connect with the potential and the possibility in every single moment. And that leads me to a mantra that I absolutely love and that I use all the time. And that is, what else is possible? What else is possible? I also like, how can it get even better than this? Now, and you can use this when something bad happens. You can use this when something good happens. So something good happens, maybe you got a bonus and you say from a feeling place, right? A feeling is the secret. From a feeling place, you say, how can it get even better than this? 
Or what else is possible besides this beautiful bonus? What you're doing is you're asking the universe, which is always returning unto you that which you are, you're asking the universe to show you what else is possible, even better, even higher. Now you can use these mantras when you have something negative happen. Maybe you get a flat, you're on the side of the highway. Now you never want to say, well, what else is possible, GD? Gosh darn it. You don't want to come from the energy of that. You really want to, in an, a curious and optimistic and grateful way, say, okay, well, what, what else is possible? What is the higher and the better? Show me. How can it get even better than this? If you ask that question, let me tell you something. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. That is a universal law. So if we ask the question, whether good or bad is happening in our life, the universe or the world of spirit will answer so try that from now on how can it get even better than this what else is possible i like that i i am wordy in case you haven't realized what a chatterbox i am so i do that but it's so much more wordy (laughs) (laughs) but i like that yours is very simple and to the point could we also maybe what can i do to take this moment and make it better to make it higher like is that is that taking away from no anything it's just a, it's just a different intention no you're or still what asking can we do mm-hmm. god in me and god up there what mm-hmm. can we do together how can we create yes. more beautiful moments and things this is wonderful it is wonderful and you know what i do? i try to remember to do i don't always remember but i try to make a practice every day my feet hit the floor and I am grateful. Well, I made it another day, you know, at our age, honey, that's something. <laughs> Absolutely. I made it another day. Absolutely. And then I always ask, show me God, how I can be a blessing today. Show me how I can be of service and sunshine and high vibration. Show me the spaces and the places and the people that I can bless today. A Course in Miracles says it so beautifully. And I heard Neil Donald Walsh say this when I went to one of his seminars. And the quote is, I have come into this room to bless this room. There is no other reason for me to be here. And I love that. And if we take that mindset into absolutely everything, like I have come into my office today to bless my office and everyone in it. There's no other reason for me to be here. Or I have come into this relationship to bless this relationship. There's no other reason for me to be here. It really changes how you how you see people, see situations, and see places, and gets you very intentional about how you can serve, which is just another form of giving our gratitude and our thankfulness, using our life in that way. That Don't you love that? Amazing. I have come into this room to bless this room. There's no, because if I'm not going to bless this room, let me not go into it. If I'm going to be lowering the vibe, if I'm going to be bumming people out, if I'm going to be critical, I should not go into that room. I'm only going into that room or that relationship if I'm going to bless somebody today. And that's my intention. Boom, boom, when my feet hit the floor. And so it is. And so it is, Brian. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. If I am, I have no idea about any of this, but I want to get involved. I want to get down and I want to pray tonight. Yeah. So if someone comes to you and says, I just, I don't know how, I, I, I don't know what to do. Can you please just tell me right now what I can do to pray in this moment? What would you say? Well, I would say, can you talk to your husband? Can you talk to your dog? And can you talk to your mom? And if you can talk to your dog, your husband or your mom, you can talk to God. And it's as simple and casual as that. You don't have to open up the prayer in a ceremonial fashion. You don't have to close it in a ceremonial fashion. It's just having a conversation. And again, communication just helps us to go deeper with the person we're speaking to. So just talk. Talk about maybe you can start with the things that you're thankful for. Today, this is what happened with me. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, God, and me. Thank you, God, for allowing that to happen. Show me how I can just start speaking. The mechanics of the speech, like that gets the motor running and soon you're going to be talking about all things and here's the thing about prayer and the world of spirit like the the world of spirit will get involved in your life on very deep and profound levels and also in really casual ways if you talk to them (laughs) like if you say hey angels can you help me pick out the dress to wear today based on the right color so i'm giving off the right energy if you ask your angels be like absolutely here you go this is the right dress for you. Like they will lead you in the most minute things and also in the most important important things. But they wait for you to ask 
because the world of spirit is all about free will. They're never going to barge in and make you wear the red dress crystal. <laughs> they're <laughs> going to they're going to wait until you ask for their guidance and their counsel. And so ask for things in prayer, but again, not from a beggar position. We're asking in curiosity, well, what should I wear today? How can I be a blessing today? What do I need to do for my husband so he feels valued and validated and lifted up? Ask for those things. Casually ask and the world of spirit will respond. But here's the thing. When you ask, you've got to listen. We talked about that in the segment on automatic writing. So many people ask and then they go to the soccer game or they watch the Duke game. Start screaming all over the place. Okay, that was me. <laughs> but you don't stop and allow spirit to answer. And you don't notice the things that are happening in your environment, which contain the answer because you're reactive and you're busy. So if you're going to ask, pay attention and give space for that answer. But truly, Brian, as casual as possible. You know, I have prayed sometimes and talked to my angels and I have been vulgar. I get mad. I've gotten mad at them sometimes. Oh, God. Lord Jesus, I have gotten mad at my emissaries like, um, what are you doing? Why aren't you showing up? I need you to be here now. And I've called them names and I've been superhuman and awful in moments, but that's prayer too. That's prayer too. I'm still talking about what's on my heart. And believe me, I'm not offending any of the angels. I'm not offending God. God can take little Crystal Ann Compton having a temper tantrum. It's just about expressing and communicating. So however that looks for you is perfect. It's perfect. So would you say that if you want to pray and and then at, at that point you are asking for more abundance in your life, more blessings in your life to be more of a blessing to people, would you say during that conversation you should hang out afterwards and just feel? Because we're not really, when we're in prayer, we're not really meditating. Right. So you can pray we, while you meditate, though, but I mean, those things can be complementary to each other, but correct, okay. not always, yeah. So, but I'm saying you shouldn't pray and then run in and start like cooking dinner for your family because you might miss a response. Like, should you hang out in that moment? That That's, I guess, what I'm trying to get across for people that want to just start doing it. And I want to make sure that, that we're kind of guiding them in the sort of, not say do's and don'ts, but because they know it's sort of individual. But I just want to kind of give them a good foot off. So if you're, I mean, you shouldn't just run into your prayer. Oh, I'm grateful for my day. Thank you so much. And then go on. Like, should you hang out for a little bit in that energy? If you can, I think if you have the time to just like open the chamber of the communication, it's like, if, just imagine somebody sitting, it's just imagine it's me and you. Would I just say a bunch of stuff to you and then just walk away? Probably not. I would say a bunch of stuff to you. I would be so hurt. <laughs> and then I'd wait to see what you thought and I'd wait for yeah. your response like that. Any like yeah. any relationship works like that. Prayer is the same thing. So if you have the time, yeah, maybe just keep that chamber open for a little while and see if something comes through. But if you don't, it's good to pray and then just get up and do the thing that you need to do. Absolutely pray at any point. And the thing about that is if you don't have the time and the space to receive anything back, prayer is not necessarily about receiving something back. But if you don't have the time to do that, just make sure you are being observant throughout your day and present throughout your day because spirit will talk to you in many different ways. And usually when spirit is talking to you or answering your prayers, it's through the voice of another person. It's through the demonstration or the example of another person. Or it's using your inner voice. Like when you read a book and you're reading those words in your head, you can hear your voice reading those words. That's what spirit sounds like most of the time when spirit's talking to us with an inner word. So you have to be paying attention to your life and to all of your clairs and all of the things so that you're really willing to receive that answer. But sometimes prayer isn't about asking for things. It's just about saying, God, I love you. I'm so thankful. Thank you, God, in me. Thank you, God, for this life. Oh, I'm so grateful. I just want, I just want to be in the energy of that and be in the gratitude of that. So I haven't asked for anything, but I've still connected on that deep level. And I'm also manifesting because I'm putting it out into the universe. Hmm. Yeah. And folks, you do realize that is so simple. Yeah. Like Crystal said, you don't need to, to do this deep ritual to pray. You just have to talk. Yeah. It's that simple. That's how you get to know somebody. You see, talk to them and you hang out with them. You spend the time. And if you do that with God, if you do that with spirit, spirit will sidle up and talk with you too. And everybody wants that. <laughs>